Hello everyone, my name is Sheikh Hussain. In this video, we are going to discuss fourth chapter from 10th class, that is carbon and its compounds. Here in periodic table, there are 118 elements. Among these elements, carbon is with atomic number 6. Actually, the existence, the occurrence of carbon in nature is very, very less. In earth crust, it is only of 0.02%, whereas in atmosphere, it is 0.03%. Yet, uh, carbon is more powerful. No other element in the periodic table can form as the number of compounds that carbon forms. Carbon particularly combines with hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, halogens and sulfur and forms millions and millions of compounds. In our day-to-day -day life, uh, the most of the compounds we are using are carbon compounds. All the living organisms are made up of carbon compounds. Our body is made up of carbon compounds. Plants are made up of carbon compounds. Our food is made up of carbon compounds. The medicine we use, carbon compound. The fuels we use, carbon compounds. The oils we apply, carbon compounds. The syrups we drink, carbon compounds. If I continue to say this list, uh, this list will be enormous, very huge list we get. So carbon compounds are very much essential and very important in our daily life. So out of all these elements, 118 elements, the chemistry of carbon is separated from the chemistry and formed a separate branch of chemistry that is organic chemistry or carbon chemistry. So a very huge branch. There are three main branches in chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry and physical chemistry that you will study in higher classes. In this video, we are going to discuss briefly about covalent compounds, how the covalent compounds are formed and some properties of carbon compounds, particularly allotropes. Next come to the point, carbon is a non-metal with atomic number 6. Here, uh, it is very essential to know the electronic configuration of carbon before going to study about carbon compounds. Carbon atomic number 6 and its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. Here, you know that uh, p subshell has 3 orbitals, px, py and pz. So, out of 2 electrons, one electron will be in a 2px and another electron will be in 2py 2pz orbital is empty, vacant. This is a ground state configuration, normal configuration. But in excited state, when carbon forms bonds with other elements, then one electron from S jumps into pz orbital, then its electronic configuration changes to 2s1, 2px1, 2py1 and 2pz1. See here, 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. That means there are four unpaid electrons four single electrons we can find. So carbon can form four single bonds at a time. So its valency is four, its combining capacity is four. This is a very important point, valency of carbon is four. Wherever carbon is present, there should be four bonds around the carbon. You might know the different types of chemical bondings. While com carbon combining with other elements, it cannot form ionic bonds, it can form only covalent bonds. Why it cannot form ionic bonds? Why only covalent bonds? Let's discuss briefly. The carbon is with atomic number 6. And here uh, it is in between two noble gases. One is uh, helium whose atomic number is 2. And second one is a neon whose atomic number is 10. If carbon wants to form an ionic bond, it should become an ion first. That means it should form a cation or an anion. To form cation, it should lose electrons. How many electrons it should lose? See here, its nearest uh, noble gas is helium, carbon is atomic number 2 and carbon is 6. Carbon has to lose 4 electrons to become C plus 4. It should lose 4 electrons. But uh, losing 4 electrons is very, very difficult. Okay? Because uh, losing 4 electrons is a very difficult process. Similarly, if carbon wanted to form uh, C minus 4 anion, that means to get neon configuration, it has to gain 4, ne 4 electrons, carbon atomic number 6 and a neon atomic number 10, it has to gain 4 electrons to get neon configuration, then only it becomes C minus 4, but gaining 4 electrons also highly impossible. So carbon cannot lose 4 electrons, it cannot gain 4 electrons to get into respective ion. So, the only one possibility that carbon is having is it can share electrons with uh, nearby atoms. 
so carbon participate in sharing of electrons so it forms covalent bond okay here we will discuss how a covalent bond is formed what is covalent bond and uh, at the end we will discuss how carbon can form now uh, four bonds with uh, four hydrogen atoms okay let's start with uh, the simple molecule that is the formation of hydrogen molecule h2 molecule hydrogen atomic number 1 and its electronic configuration is 1s1 hydrogen has only one valence electron see here i have taken two hydrogen atoms this is the first hydrogen atom and its valence electron and second hydrogen atom its valence electron i have represented with cross mark this is called lewis dot method when two hydrogen atoms come, come close together then this electron pair that means the electron of first hydrogen and electron of second hydrogen will be shared among these two hydrogen atoms so there will be formation of a covalent bond covalent bond is a bond formed due to mutual sharing of electron pair so here between hydro two hydrogen atoms there will be formation of one covalent bond that is called single bond after formation of covalent bond the molecule becomes stable how see here here two electrons are shared by both the hydrogen atoms the first hydrogen atom has two electrons now that means it has got a helium configuration 1s2 second hydrogen atom also has got two electrons because these two electrons are common for both the hydrogen atoms this is the mutual property so second hydrogen atom also got helium configuration 1s2 so they got the nearest noble gas configuration so the molecule is stable similarly when the come to the second example formation of chlorine molecule chlorine atomic number 17 chlorine has a seven valence electrons out of seven valence electrons three electron pairs and one is a single electron one is unpaired electron see here i have represented lewis dot structure of chlorine three pairs three twos are six and the seventh electron is unpaired similarly second chlorine atom also has seven valence electrons three electron pairs and one is unpaired these electrons i have represented with cross marks just to differentiate when these two chlorine atoms come close together then these two unpaired electrons single electrons will be shared between these chlorine atoms and there will be formation of a covalent bond between the two chlorine atoms a single bond will be formed between the two chlorine atoms here each chlorine atom is having three lone pair of electrons and there will be a single bond these two molecules form single bonds according to lewis concept if any atom gets eight electrons in its valence shell it will be more stable so here carbon sorry chlorine has got seven electrons chlorine has seven electrons this chlorine also has seven electrons but this electron pair is mutually shared by both the chlorine atoms now how many electrons are there at each carbon see one two three three twos are six and this bonded pair fourth pair that is four twos are eight electrons the second chlorine also is having two plus two plus two and this bonded pair total eight electrons so both the chlorine atoms has got uh, octet configuration so it will be stable similarly oxygen molecule formation of oxygen molecule oxygen atomic number here I right oxygen atomic number eight and it has six valence electrons out of six valence electrons two are electron pairs and two are unpaired electrons similarly second atom is also having two electron pairs and two unpaired electrons when two oxygen atoms come close together here these two unpaired electrons of each uh, oxygen atom will be shared so that uh, here double bond will be formed between the two oxygen atoms so o double bond o now how many electrons are there at each oxygen atom see here two lone pair of electrons and a two bonded pair of electrons total four electron pairs four twos are eight second oxygen atom also is having two lone pair of electrons and two bonded electrons bond pair of electrons and four twos are eight so each carbon uh, each oxygen atom has got octet configuration so that molecule also stable similarly nitrogen nitrogen atomic number seven and it has uh, five valence electrons out of five valence electron it has a uh, one lone pair and three unpaired electrons three single electrons each nitrogen atom when both the nitrogen atoms come close to each other then the three unpaired electrons of each nitrogen atom will be shared then three covalent bonds will be formed 
that means uh, a triple bond will be formed in oxygen molecule double bond in nitrogen molecule triple bond will be formed here each nitrogen atom is having eight electrons see here three bonds three bond pairs three twos are six and one lone pair eight so each nitrogen atom has got octet configuration so nitrogen molecule also stable in all these examples we have taken similar atoms these type of molecules are called homogeneous molecules now let's discuss few heterogeneous molecules which includes uh, different types of atoms so among these the most important molecules are water ammonia and methane let's see how water molecule will be formed due to covalent bonding so in water molecule the central atom is oxygen and as we discussed in the third example oxygen atomic number 8 and it has a six valence electrons out of six valence electrons two two electron pairs means uh, two lone pair of electrons and two unpaired electrons these unpaired electrons combines with the uh, two hydrogen atoms unpaired electrons of two hydrogen atoms hydrogen all each hydrogen having one unpaired electron so two covalent bonds will be formed between oxygen and two hydrogen atoms so this is the shape of a water molecule water molecules having angular shape with bond angle 104.5 degrees similarly formation of ammonia in ammonia the central atom is nitrogen nitrogen atomic number 7 and it is having five valence electrons out of five valence electrons two electrons that is one electron paid and the remaining three are unpaid electrons these three unpaired electrons combines with the three individual electrons of uh, three hydrogen atoms so we get uh, three covalent bonds so there will be formation of three nitrogen hydrogen bonds so if the molecule is having pyramidal shape with bond angle 107 degrees when we come to methane molecule ch4 molecule a carbon compound and it is a simplest carbon compound here the central atom is carbon carbon atomic number is six and it has a four unpaired electrons all the four and unpaired electrons here in the beginning we have seen carbon in excited state gets uh, four unpaired electrons so there are four unpaired electrons around the carbon atom so by using all these four unpaired electrons it can combine with the four hydrogen atoms so four covalent bonds will be formed between carbon and four hydrogens so ch4 molecule will be formed this molecule will be in a tetrahedral shape with bond angle 109 degrees 28 minutes with this explanation you might have got some brief idea about uh, how a covalent bond is formed now let's move on to the properties of carbon compounds and allotropes they are a physical state most of the carbon compounds are in liquid state or in gas state very few compounds will be in solid state like diamond graphite etc and melting and boiling point of uh, carbon compounds are very low so they have very low melting and boiling points due to weak intermolecular interactions among carbon compounds the molecular interactions will be very less in comparison with ionic compounds so they have low melting and boiling points solubility carbon compounds are non-polar compounds so they soluble only in non-polar solvents non-polar solvents do not soluble in polar solvents like water ammonia etc so carbon compounds soluble only in non-polar organic solvents but not in water next come to conductivity these compounds mostly are poor conductors or weak conductors of heat and electricity there are few exceptions like graphite graphite is good conductor of heat and electricity next come to most important property allotropy what is allotropy allotropy means existence of an element in different physical forms the same element but it has different physical forms for example diamond graphite fullerenes these are the three allotropes are in present sil uh, our syllabus so we'll discuss briefly about diamond graphite and fullerenes do you know diamond consists of only carbon atoms only carbon atoms 100 percent carbon atoms graphite consists of only carbon atoms similarly fullerene is made up of only carbon atoms some basic differences between diamond and graphite so diamond is colorless colorless means white and shiny very shiny and it is it looks very beautiful whereas graphite black opaque substance and diamond undergoes sp3 hybridization sp3 total four four hybrid orbitals 
will participate in bond formation. Whereas graphite undergoes sp2 hybridization, sp2, total three hybrid orbitals participate in bond formation. Since diamond is undergoing sp3 hybridization, each carbon is surrounded by four other carbon atoms. See, for example, if it is a carbon and it is surrounded by four other carbon atoms in diamond. And here, this each carbon, this carbon again surrounded by four other carbon atoms, this carbon surrounded by four other carbon atoms, this surrounded by four carbon atoms and this also surrounded by four other carbon atoms. That means each and every carbon in diamond is surrounded by four other carbon atoms. So we get a huge number of bonds. So diamond is a very, very hot substance and it is the hardest material in the world. And whereas uh, graphite undergoes sp2 hybridization and each carbon is surrounded by three carbon atoms and it is having some layers like structure, two dimensional structure, whereas diamond is having three dimensional structure. Diamond is bad conductor of uh, heat and electricity, whereas graphite is good conductor of heat and electricity. Here the, the reason for electrical conductivity is uh, presence of unpaid electrons. Whereas in the case of diamond, there is, no, there is no unpaid electron because in diamond, all the orbitals are participating in hybridization. One s orbital, three p orbitals, total sp3 hybridization. One s orbital, 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. That means all the orbitals are involving in hybridization. So no orbital is left. That means no unpaid electron is left in case of diamond. So diamond is a bad conductor of heat and electricity. Whereas in case of graphite, uh, undergoing only sp2 hybridization, that means uh, one s orbital and two p orbitals. What about pz? Pz is unhybridized. That means it doesn't participate in hybridization. That means every carbon atom in graphite has one electron. That means suppose if you take a graphite which contains some one crore carbon atoms, it will have one crore unpaired electrons. As the number of unpaired electrons increases, its electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity also, also increases. So graphite is good conductor of heat and electricity. And the diamond is very hard as we discussed earlier and uh, graphite is soft. Since graphite is soft, it will be used uh, in a preparation of uh, lubricants and some uh, lead pencils, etc. Since the graphite is good conductor of heat and electricity, it is used as electrodes. And graphite, whereas a diamond is very beautiful, shiny, colorless, and it is used in jewelry, some glass cutting devices. Actually, diamond is one of the most precious material in the world, and it is the hardest material also in the world. These are the few differences between diamond and graphite. Next come to third allotrope that is fullerene. And fullerene is also called as a C60. Means one fullerene molecule, one fullerene have 60 carbon atoms. All 60 carbon atoms link it together in the form of some pentagonal and hexagonal rings. Actually C60 fullerene will have 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. The name fullerene comes from an American architect Buckminster Fuller. It appears as a bucky balls or football as shown in the figure. So dear students, these are the main points of uh, today's video. Be happy and be healthy. We'll meet in the next video with the versatile nature of carbon atoms. Thank you for watching. Share this video to your friends and don't forget to subscribe.